Hi, welcome to the Oliver Fetter YouTube channel. Today I am working on a shifting issue that I have where when I try to put it in first gear, it doesn't quite make it all the time. As in, some part of the mechanical linkage doesn't quite let you into the shift gate when you're trying to get there. Aside from that, I've been waiting on finishing this turbo build, mainly on the wiring and computerization side of it, but progress is being made. I ordered the necessary sensors I need to work with the basically Arduino that is going to control the VNT Turbo. I'm hoping in the next few weeks, me and Dave will be able to tackle that project and have the Turbo actually operational. In the meantime, I am almost having enough dollars to work on my 1.9 liter motor, which needs rods and injectors still and a thorough wash. Doing those two things kind of in parallel and eventually swapping the 1.6 for the 1.9 and keeping the sick turbo control system. But today, shift your repair. Let me show you what the problem is. Uh, it's hard when you're not driving the car. Basically, first right should be over here, but you can hear I'm actually hitting the side of the shift box over there. And it doesn't go in the best, especially when you're driving. Like sometimes it does this. So if that's first gear and this is second gear, a lot of times when I'm driving, it kind of does, well, now I can't make it do it. <laughs> but just sometimes going into first, and right now, yeah, it kind of does that. It will like get hung up before going into first gear, like that, instead of just going in. So there's some slop in the U-joint below the shifter, and I'm gonna try to address that problem today. I'm going to go ahead and show you what it looks like to shift through the gears on the engine bay side of things. And I will call out what I'm doing as I'm doing it. This motion here is going back and forth between the first and the fifth side of the gearbox without selecting a gear. Now I'm going towards first, now I'm going into first, then there's second, and then there's third. Essentially what the problem is here, this motion is lacking some precision. And it looks like the first thing that might be wrong here, let me get this out of the way. This is a Heim joint linkage. So I already upgraded my shift components over stock, which normally they're plastic. And you know, I'll say they're better, but they're not perfect uh, by any means. They're, they're strictly okay. This first link here, which definitely has something to do with that motion, has some slop in it, it's not quite tight, so I'm gonna go ahead and take it off and inspect it. But then the other thing is, this rotational motion really comes from moving the shifter side to side, and that is directly correlated to the U-joint that's under the shifter. Still gonna look at that too. So this is pretty much what those Heim joints look like. They let uh, each end pivot, so it just acts as a, a link and allows some movement. This one side was just a bit loose, it didn't have its not attached to it, so it kind of could do this motion, this little wiggle, but it couldn't come off. So for now, that's not our problem, but I am going to tighten it up and put it back on. Get oriented, we're under the car now. And if you look, I'm able to translate this linkage without it rotating. Like this is what it should do, it should rotate. But you can actually see, apologies for the wild camera angles, that there's slop. So it's not rotating the way it should. If a U-joint like this isn't rotating and has this much play in it, something is wrong. And you can even see, if you look right there, you can see it shift angularly side to side. All right. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this thing out. Uh, I'm not really concerned about this yoke part. That's all good and fine. I'm concerned about this part here in the center, that barrel. That's our problem for sure, which means probably gonna disconnect this. And all right, well here are our culprits. This is that bolt that went through, and there's actually these little bushings that go in between one part of the yoke and the center. 
And as you can see, these bushings are not doing too hot. This one especially is really bad. So here we go. Two new bushings to replace these two. And as you can see, this is kind of what I showed you in the car, these parts over here. This is obviously your shifter inside the passenger compartment. And then right about here is what we just looked at upside down on the camera. So I'm gonna go ahead and order those new bushings and they'll probably just slap right in. But if you have shifter slop and you're having trouble getting it in the first or second, you might wanna look at this. It's pretty quick. It's quite literally one bolt and two bushings. Kidding, I don't use Euro tuning. They wanted $15 for two bushings plus $50 shipping or something dumb. Amazon has pretty much the same thing. Not Durlin, but who cares? Uh, and it's gonna work and it does actually fit. I checked on a different website and it's $3.29. Wow, that was fast. Look at that, they're already here. Uh, <laughs> all right, it's like a few days later now. I ordered all these bushings, which we're about to try out for these spent ones. And I also got in sensors for the Rabbit. I got two pressure sensors. So these are gonna determine boost pressure and turbo drive pressure. I got a thermocouple. So we're gonna be measuring intake temperature and with intake temperature and pressure, we'll be able to calculate intake density. And then I have a couple, I forget what these are called, honestly, potentiometers, which I'm gonna use one of these hopefully to measure pedal position. So with that combination, we'll be able to get some pretty pretty nice turbo tuning going with the BNT. In terms of these bushings, let's see what's going on. This is a complete kit, actually. So assuming you didn't have the weird and slightly dumb heim joint linkage that I have, you could replace most of your bushings in your, in your Volkswagen with this kit. So there's our old bushing, right? Kind of wobbly. That was probably the better one. This might be the worst one. Yeah, you can see that. That's not good. And these all kind of look the same, but I think these are probably our new bushings, and they're just as loose. Oh my god. Oh, oh, just kidding. That one's cash. So maybe there's a couple different ones. So you can see we do have quite a bit of improvement. It's not perfect by any means. To be fair, by the time you get over here, it actually is pretty tight. For whatever reason, this further end of the bolt is actually just like kind of loose. So, point being, these are our new bushings. They are still better than these old ones. You can see that's like a lot of play and this is just a little bit of play. Okay, I'm back under the car. New bushings are installed and it's quite a bit better, but there's still a teeny bit of play. Can you see that? Now, what I'm looking at is as I move this back and forth, I'm looking for that top shifter arm to be rocking a little bit in its seat. And it is ever so slightly, but it is much better than before. The real test here, I think, is going to be going for a drive uh, because that's really when the problem manifests itself. It's like coming to a stop, trying to put it in first gear. You usually have a problem with that. So.
back to first, and it won't let me. There it goes. Has anyone else experienced this? Okay, well, that will conclude this video. Uh, my shifter was having trouble going into first gear. And we looked at all possible angles of why that was happening. Uh, I tried different shift linkage lengths, and I tried replacing my shifter bushings, both of which would have made sense if it wasn't making it to the shift gate. Uh, but as you can see, it clearly is making it to the shift gate, and it's still hard to put into first gear when you're rolling, so that only leaves me to conclude that it's something internal to the transmission that is making it difficult to shift into first gear while still moving. I hope you found this video informative. If you are also having a problem shifting in the first gear while rolling, you can follow these same steps and or diagnose that if in without your car moving, if you can easily get it into gear, and then when it is moving, you can't easily get it into gear, it's pretty easy to assume that it's a synchro now that I've gone through the steps. Thank you for watching. Appreciate you. Have a good day out there. Huh?